Look up at the camera. Barry, look up here. Dave here, how are you? I don't know if you can hear me or see me or anything like that, probably. But uh, today is Barry's 13th birthday. So I thought I would get, <laughs> I'd get him down here. And he's quite interested in what I have in my pocket here because it's the only way I could bribe him. So I'll get him another piece. It's a little bit of uh, treat that he's allowed to have. It doesn't put a lot of weight on. There you go. How's that? <laughs> he hasn't got any teeth. So he gums things. Come on. There you go. There you go. So you can... We'll put that food out of the way. You can say hello to everyone. <laughs> he's a guard, isn't he? Now, Barry's only going to stay here for a short time with me because I'm concerned he's going to fall off the back. He's very interested about that food now. and he, Everywhere I move my hand, he's thinking, oh, there must be food somewhere. Now, uh, let me see. What, I, what was I going to say? Uh, I, oh, I just had to go and pick him up from the house because he was sound asleep. I only woke him up five minutes ago. This is what 91-year-old dogs do. Uh, I love him. Who wouldn't love a dog? You know, if you've got a pet, he's, they become part of your family and that's all there is to it. He's the last of the four pugs that we had. And I have... Uh, I have Hopes that he's going to last for another couple of years, but uh, a fact is a fact. They don't live as long as we do, and it's a very sad day when they go. Anyway, what was I going to do? Now, Barry, you have to look cute. Come on, head up here, head up here. Come on, get your head up. There we go. <laughs> he's not bad for 13, though, is he? His back legs are pretty shot. He can get up and walk around, but uh, I noticed this morning when I put him outside, you know, Grab him out of his bed, pop, pop him outside to have a wander around, do what he's got to do. He um, he took a long time to get up. I picked him up with his back feet, the back legs, and he just sat down on the ground again, back up. And then slowly as he wakes up, he can kind of consciously tell his back legs what to do, and they kind of wobble around a little bit, and eventually he's okay. But uh, he is very old. Now, Barry, we're going to read what's on in the show today. So Barry will stay with us for about 10 minutes. So say good day to him in the meantime. Uh, you're going to help me read this, buddy? Barry the Pug turns 13, guest, experience, guest appearance. That's you. <laughs> uh, some tips on the Festool Domino. I got the 700 Domino out. I thought I'd do a couple of things with it just to show some of the versatility of what it can do. And it's the 700's capacity for a plunge is, is you know 70 millimetres, which is huge. I wonder if that's why they call it the 700 because it can do a 70 millimeter plunge. Um, okay, now also Derek Lark sporting his new eye muffs. Uh, thanks to George from eye muffs. And thank you very much to eye muffs for supplying and posting out their product to people who have been fortunate enough to win them during the show uh, for the last month. It's been absolutely fantastic. Let me see if I've got a picture. Glasses on, glasses off of someone else who couldn't wait and went out and bought them. There you are, Hilton. <laughs> That's a terrific photo of Hilton. He's, he's rushed out and bought those because he thought, I'm never going to win anything. And probably just as well, because he didn't. <laughs> uh, where are we? Next thing, next thing. Sue B uh, with Animal Friends and New Homemade Gates. Now, Sue's got a couple of small sheds in her backyard and she's made these driveway gates out of timber. And I reckon that's fantastic. So she sent me a few photos. She be warned, she does have a lot of animals. Uh, <laughs> so that's that'll be something to wait for her for a second. Hello, he's getting a bit anxious, a bit more, bit more Barry persuaded. Here you go, matey. Hey, smell, smell. Look at that. Look at that. She's, come on, attack it like a crocodile on the Mar Margaret River or Ross River, whatever it is. Was that good? Okay. What's the next thing? Sorry about the, uh, the distractions here. Uh, okay, new prizes this month, not next month, this month, uh, from Stanley uh, Black & Decker from Jeremy Carter. Now, Jeremy is the sales manager, I think, for the East Coast. He may even be the national sales ma manager. I don't know, Jeremy. I, I may have given you a promotion. I may have been demoting you. I'm sorry about that. So he's got a few levels. He's got three uh, Stanley levels. One's a Fat Max. The other one, or the other two, are a... Goethe style, and the last one is a carbon fiber. And also, 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 we'll be giving a shirt, a DeWalt shirt and a DeWalt cap. So what will happen is Jeremy or I will get in touch with the winner each week and let you know um, 
sorry, I got distracted by the phone there. We'll, we'll uh, try and find your shirt size. You don't need to tell us the cap size. They've got an expanding thing on the back. So that'll be good as well. Okay. Everyone's saying happy birthday to Barry. We love you, Barry. <laughs> yes. He can't really hear me too well either. He's, you know, he's pretty much stone deaf, aren't you? Barry, Barry, Barry. <laughs> he's not even turning around. I've got no idea I'm talking, which is good because I can sneak. But you know what it's like with dogs? You get up in the morning, you think, right, I don't want to wake the dogs up. Just get up, get my stuff done, get out, get the, out the door and go to work. These things used to, you know, they'd hear a leaf drop. 300 meters away but now <laughs> the leaf could drop on his head you could drop a 10 pound weight and he said you wouldn't even know would you okay now what's the other thing patreon check out the rewards that i'm offering there as well and also i will read out the people who are supporting the channel at the moment through patreon roger debolt johannes moa john wilson john para vincent niang louis uberg and raymond tot thank you so much to all of those people that are helping me out uh, a few of those people I'm also Skyping with, so they get they get a 10 minute Skype just to chat with me. And whilst that might not sound terribly exciting, they're asking me questions on how to do things, which is fantastic. So if I can give you some advice over a Skype conversation or it's one on one, that's there waiting for you as well. So all of those details are in the description box or where below this screen will say show more. Jump in there. OK. A solar circumnavigation for Barry. There you go. Everyone's talking about you. <laughs> it's not his show. It's mine. <laughs> he doesn't do anything. Maybe I should just sit there. Anyone want to say hi, Dave? No. Okay. The next thing. The next thing. Uh, chat more if it can be squeezed in. Keep the channel afloat. Use the links in the description box below. And away we go. Now, for people who haven't watched the show... That is pretty much all of the introduction. There'll be a few minutes here quickly having a chat with people down the side. I'll pop Barry back outside. He can wander over to one of the other buildings here and have a sleep in the sun. And then I'll get into the demonstrations. Now, this week's winner of the Irwin tool bag, I'll tell you a little bit later on. <laughs> Let me have a look here. What do we got? Look at all this chat. Look at all this chat. Look at all this chat. Uh, I'm not going to read it all because all of this chat is saved in the recording. So if you want to come back and watch the recording further down the track, all of your chat, anything you pop in there will come up unless my moderators, who are John and Carl, they're in here at the moment, they may uh, think that some of the things that you're starting to say might be a little bit uh, risque and put you on hold for a while or bin it. So be careful of that. Uh, Peter Woolworth, hello all. Steve H, how's it going? Um, going to have a party hat no no i'm not having a party hat barry's not having a... look how about we do this this will be a picture for for george i have another picture like this what do you think baz as i say it's not going to make any difference down onto his nose pugs don't really have a nose there <laughs> it doesn't look he doesn't look very happy does he Oh, you poor little man. You okay? He's pushing back onto me. The thing is, he doesn't realize there's a bloody big fall right behind. He's looking for the food. See this? <laughs> Another bit. Keep him happy for a minute. There we go. Up you go. Come on. Jump. <laughs> you know, in Australia, it's commonplace for people to carry their... If, when they're going places in their ute... Uh, the dog will jump in the back and I'll have the <laughs> I'll be there. But old Barry, I don't think he'd be any good in the back of a ute. Now, a ute's a, a little flatbed truck. That's what we call a flatbed truck in Australia is a utility. Um, <laughs> I think what had happened to Barry, it, up you come, up, 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 up. Hey, look, give him a round of applause. <laughs> what had happened to, that's the end of the stick, mate. That's all of it. What would happen to Barry is he would just roll around <laughs> from side to side, smash in to the tailgate and the drop sides. And I don't think he'd last terribly long in the back of the ute. He used to be fine in the back of the ute. But nowadays, I think we've got to chain dogs into the back of a utility. Or tie them in so they can't jump out. Uh, let me have a look here. Where are we up to? Clicking through, clicking through, clicking through. Greetings from Northern Kentucky. Thanks, Carl. Cameron, stream is A1 here in Canada. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Planty, good morning, Barry and Dave. Barry first again. Come on, come on. 
Uh, Rob Hamlet. Hi, Dave and Barry. Thanks, Rob. You got it right. Happy birthday to Barry. Saw a neat T-shirt that said something similar. Did you? Put a treat on top of the camera. That'll probably work, John. Uh, happy birthday, Barry, from uh, Dave M, the Swedish hand. Barry, there we go. Barry Doxy. Great to see Barry. We love you, Barry J. Para. Zanes, I believe Barry is rather bored. Interest can be maintained with treats. Indeed, it can. Stuart West, hi, Dave, and happy birthday, Barry. Morning all from Govinda. Thomas Hannity, happy birthday, Barry, from Ireland. Happy birthday. D morning, Dave. Happy birthday, Barry. Keep shitting on the carpet. My wife said to me, Vicky said to me, um, I'd get rid of that word and put poop down instead. I said, you know what, baby? It's already happened. It's done. I'm sorry. If I offended anyone with that, um, the S-H-I-T word, I'm sorry. But when it happens, that's what you're really thinking. You're not thinking to yourself, Barry, you've pooped on the carpet. You're thinking, Barry, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not, it's not really endearing time when he does it. It's, uh, but he's, I don't know, he's, he struggles to get up and get around. So what do you do? Anyway, I'm going to pop Barry outside. And so this will probably be the last time you see it. Oh, thank you for that. Thanks, Wayne. That's 10 bucks for Barry's birthday treat, is it? So he can, uh, I can get him some more, some more chews of some sort. Or another visit to the vet to keep him going. <laughs> I'm going to pop him outside and then we'll get stuck into the show. We've had enough time here with Bess. Okay. Come on, Eddie. Come on. Ah, oh, that's a point. You going to say goodbye to everyone? <laughs> he's, sniffing, he's sniffing the pocket, wants to know where the food is. All right, I'll pop him outside. Back in a flash. There you go. Off you go. <laughs> he wanted to come back inside. He knew there was more food in here. Not happening. All right. I'll pop that over there as well. Where are we up to? Where are we up to? Coffee. Run sheet, run sheet, run sheet. That, 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 and that. All right. What I might do is we'll jump in with Sue B to start off and have a quick look at the things that's been happening there. Get the old bloke something for his birthday. I meant <laughs> Barry. Okay. Thanks, Wayne. I will do. I will do. And I'll let him know. I'll let him know it was from Uncle Wayne. He'll say that's fantastic. Okay. So Sue B, where are we? Where are we? It's that one there. And I will get this little bit here. Now, I'm going to let it run. And then when we get to the gate section, I'll start reading this bit. I don't think there's any sound in it. These are her sheds in the backyard. And I'm guessing we're going to be seeing some of the animals that hang out with her very soon as well. Cats, the ducks. More cats and more cats. And here are the gates. My new double gate with lots of firsts. Never done lap joints before. The left panel was done with my little Ryobi circular saw and wood chisels. And the right hand side panel was done with the new Ryobi sliding miter saw. Much better result. Cross beams were pocket holed. Another first and one by six by twelves were cut and dog eared for the pickets. Although it's not Nearly perfect. It's okay from her first try. I'm proud enough to share it. That is fantastic. And that right at the end there, right at the end, was her puppy. I don't know what his name is. Sue, if you're there, can you tell us what your dog's name is? Okay, Nick Buller from Fiji today. Happy birthday, Barry's prime looking chap. Nick, I've been to Fiji once and it was an interesting experience for me. But everyone, as soon as you walk into the, as soon as you get off, off the plane, you start saying Bulla because, you know, he's, oh, wow, well, I can speak Fijian. Well, and I don't know if the people that are working there, how many times they've had people say Bulla as though, you know, it's a really, wow, look at me, I can speak Fijian. I think they just smile inwardly, but they smile as well outward, but inside, I wonder if they're thinking another idiot. <laughs> I don't know. Here we go. The next thing, the next thing, the next thing. Uh, da, 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 da. I have something from Ragtie, Ben, and also from 
um, Derek. But what I might do is jump into a bit of a demonstration first. We'll go over to the domino and switch that one. There we go. And I'll come over this side. You can see I've already got it set up. Now, for people who don't know, this is the Domino 700 or XL. It is the machine that I bought because I thought, you know, I bought this whilst I was still doing construction or just finishing on construction. I thought, oh, I need the big thing. I still want to make things with 10 inch by 2 inch thick timbers. And I needed the big Domino to be able to join that size material. But as time went by, I thought maybe I should have got the 500. Now, not too far down the track, Pestle are going to lend me a 500 because they've brought out some new connectors and they're probably available everywhere else in the world. Australia tends to get things last. Or sometimes the United States gets things last as well. So we don't get it too bad. But they're going to lend me a 500, so I'm told, so that I can try out some of these new connectors and share it with you guys as to how they work. But this one here is mine that I bought, fair and square. And I, at the moment, I have a 12 millimeter cutter in there and it will do a 70 millimeter plunge. See that? That cutter, I'm going to show you how it does it in a second. All right. Now, to do it, I thought, let's help out with IMUFs as well. Now, I've got to let you know, IMUFs have not paid me anything to do a promotion for them. I approached George from IMUFs and I said, look, I would love to give these things away for a month on the channel every week, you know, as an enticement for people to come and watch the show. I'm not going to lie about that. And uh, and also to help you promote them, because I think they're a brilliant idea. I was introduced to these through Steve Innes, and he sent me an email. And he said, Dave, I think you really should have a look at these. And I'm sure George will flick you a couple if you asked him. So I got this and also the G6, I think it is, which has got a little bit of a, a brow rubber across here stops dust falling down the back but they are such a good idea and you can use them like that or like that and you can wear glasses with them which is fantastic so thanks again george for sending out those eye muffs to all of those people i think he sent five or six pairs out it's brilliant because the month the first show was on the first and the last show was on the 31st or whatever it was or the 30th and I let him out of the last one. <laughs> I said, look, let's get someone else to help out on the show. So as I say, Stanley Black and Decker have jumped in through Jeremy Carter. And they're doing the Irwin bag. And I'll tell you a little bit later on who won that one. And also the Stanley Levels. And I'll flick a picture up of those a little bit later in the show. Now, the Domino. I'm going to do just a standard plunge. But I'm going to do one right through. So this, is, this timber here is around 40 millimeters thick. Okay, it's a piece of Oregon. A lot of people would know it as Douglas fir. So I will hold that down onto my bench. I'll put the domino over to the side for the moment. And then bring this up near the front. And I'll hold it with this onto there. There's so many different clamps that I can use with this. With this bench and pull it all the way back that way. No, nope, it's not grabbing there for some reason. There we go. Got it. What's my favorite saying? It ain't going anywhere. Now I want you to watch here as I do the plunge. This is doing a mortise. So the domino system is a slip tenon. And a lot of people call it a non-rotating dowel. So if that helps you to understand it a little bit better, I know there's a lot of people watching that already know what a domino machine is, and that's great. But for people who don't, I always try and presume no knowledge on the person watching. So that's why my videos are like they are. I, I don't presume you know anything about anything except for, you know, how to breathe and maybe walk. And then you're in the same league as Barry. There you go. You're famous. All right. Let's get this on. And as I say, with these things, I put them on and then I just slide them back until they are. Brand new to this, just wanted to say I don't want to learn some of your skills so badly. You're awesome, man. Okay, John, thank you very much. All right. I have the dust extraction hooked on and it's got to have the small uh, connector, which is for a 27 millimeter hose. You can get a little adapter if you've got a 37 millimeter hose. 
that slides into the 37, 36 millimeters outlet and converts it down to a 27 so it can fit onto there. See that? It's the small guy. It's not a 22, it's a 27. Be aware, Festool's hoses get a little bit interesting. I will lower the height uh, of the cutter. So let's bring that to there. And I'll make it 25 millimeters. I've got it full depth. And I can set the depth on the side here. This sliding thing tells me what side, what depth. At the moment, I'm on 70 millimeters. So if you watch here, you'll see it comes straight through the center. What happened there? What happened there was I haven't emptied my little dust extractor, and the dust extractor has got this little thing on it where if it um, if it's got too much pulling through it, as in um, it clogs up, it's only a small one to stop it overheating because it's a sustainer style um, dust extractor. It uh, it shuts off and it won't suck. So I think it had been struggling. A little bit with that particular pull but that was interesting see things like this it's live you're not going to see anything edited let's see if it's going to start again here we go put these bad boys on all right One more thing it could be, I could have the small hose on it. Yep, that's the small lead. These are all things that are good for you to know. Now, I did this on purpose. <laughs> Do you believe that? I'm going to put the other one on. Uh, where is it? I'll see if I've got the heavier duty lead here. That could well have been the small lead. Not in that one. Where is it? Might be in the Rotex. No, not in that one either. What about in this one? Well, this lead again is a little bit of a lightweight one. This one over here is the heavy duty. And it's plugged in over there. And I'm not really going to... You know what? I might do it. I might just take that off. The joys of life. The joys of life. Let's see how this goes. Ta-da! Gotcha. Now, this is a heavier lead. I'm not even going to look at the comments. I'd be too embarrassed. So I'll pull that lead out of there. Like so. And plug that one into there. And then this one into here. See, Festool is not... Foolproof, foolproof, it's uh, plug this one into this one, which is a larger outlet, and see how we go. Give me a second. All right. Seems to be going fine. See what happens. See what happens. Beautiful. So there we go. That's what 
That's all that it was. It was the lighter duty cable which couldn't support the current. The lighter cables are designed for the small sanders or for the six inch sanders. The Domino's got a fair bit more grunt. It's a heavy duty router. Did you know it was a router? Okay, I'm gonna have a quick look. Um, great to know power load. Yeah, so there you go. It's, that's what happens. The vacuum issue is not a bug, it's a random feature. Um, okay, so there you go. You may not be aware, I'll tell you now. On a lot of Festool cables, there is a little bump. Now, I'll bring this over and you can have a look. And I've been a little bit naughty. I got rid of the bump. Can you see that? So just on the high side, there is supposed to be a little bump. And what that does, it stops you using one of the lightweight cables on things like the saw or the domino. So it's only designed to work with the sanders. And why do they do that? Because it's a nice lightweight cable to give you less resistance as you're wandering around with the machine. Um, so I've been caught out playing around with that. Don't do that because you'll see what happened just then will happen. All right, now you can see here, that's the domino and that piece of timber is, and I'll, I'll tell you how thick that is. Uh, ruler, 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 where are you? One that talks a couple of different languages. That's 40 millimeters, so it's an inch and a half thick. And a tenon, sorry, a mortise right the way through. Now, 70 millimeters is pretty amazing that it can actually do that. Uh, one of the other things I was going to do was I'm going to show you plunging with it. Now, to do that, I should have really had the machine set up a slight different way. So I'll unplug that. So it wasn't, it wasn't the vacuums issue. It was me not using the correct fitting for it. What am I after? I'm after this guy here. So this thing here, you might get this with the domino. You think, what the hell is this for? How many amps does it draw? I'll have a look. Let me see what it says on the side. I'm reading upside down. Seven hundred and twenty watts. It's a one-horse machine. So there you go. I don't know how many amps, but uh, we can work out amps. So amps will be voltage and watts. So let me see. So is it seven hundred and twenty divided by two forty? Give me a second. I'll find out exactly. I think I've got my little sheet over here. Amps equals watts divided by volts. So yeah, 700, so um, 720 divided by 240, because in Australia we're 240. Um, so 240 doubled is 500. I'm going to do it a quick, easy way. It's only three amps. It's not a lot, but uh, it is a one horse machine. What else have we got? What else have we got? We, that's right, the base plate. This thing here is designed, I'll put that piece of timber down out of the way. Isn't it fun? I love life. Okay, so this guy here screws onto the bottom. There's two bolts or screws, whatever you want to call them there. And this gives me a whole lot more support against the bottom here so I don't get any rocking. When I started doing that cut with the domino, and I'll do another one here so you can see me see it in action, make it a bit easier. Uh, where should I put it? 101 people watching. You've got to be kidding me. That many. you got no life, guys. <laughs> got to come and watch Dave. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put that onto there and then lock it. And I'll show you the difference. Put the dust extraction back on it again. See that? No dust. I love it. Um, and the lead, I'm not going to cut that section off the other hose, I'm just going to leave it there. And onto there. 
Right. I muffs again. All right. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. I'm going to put put that there. Can you see that that base section down here gives me a, a whole lot more support for the machine? There we go. Another one. What's the next thing I'm going to do with it? All right, I'll show you what else it can do. These off again. I should just probably leave those on and be done with it. Whilst I've got that on, <clears throat> I can rotate this up like that. Now, if I want to do a straight down plunge, I can. Now, I said this piece of timber was about 40 millimeters thick. I can go around to the side here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. But along the side here, I can move this down to 40 and I'll go to 35. Now I can safely go down through this and it's not going to go all the way. And I can set it up like so. So I can do a plunge and I'm not going to do it. I'll just bring it over to the side here so you can see. Can you see how far that was going to go? It wasn't going to come all the way out. It was going to stop there. 101.43 getting better. There you go. Well, you know what? It's not about the likes. I like to have likes, that's fine. Um, it's about me trying to share things with you, a little bit of knowledge. And if things go wrong, like they just did about 10 minutes ago, that's great because then I can, it, it will let me explain a little bit more as to why you shouldn't stuff around with things you should do like the, uh, the people that make the machines tell you to do and not think, oh, I know better because, um, you know, it's always worked for me before, and it has always worked for me before. That's the first time that's ever happened. So I know maybe I've stuffed that cable up. All right, what have we got next? I'm going to have a quick check, print my plans out, and then put them in a binder. Great to know the power load. Yep. All right, uh, let me see. Plunge, what else can I do? Well, how about we do a plunge? How about we do a plunge? And that'll be fine. Yeah, I'll do a plunge first, and then I'm going to do something else. I was only just thinking about what I'm going to do next. And whilst I don't really need to hold it down, I will. Put this back on. Up the right way, David. All right. Okay, now it's got some rubber. On the face there, I should have shown you that. See those two things there either side? They're little rubbers. And it's got these pins here as well that you can release. I can let all three out this side if I want. And they can reference on the sides as well. There's a whole gamut of things that can happen with a domino. So I'm going to hold it there. Done. Up there. Now, the reason I did that, that might just seem a little bit boring, but the reason I did that was to show the stability of the machine when you use that. Um, that could be it. The hot, it could be a startup amp, which was huge. Um, thanks, Kavinda. So that, as I say, it stops the machine rocking around at all because as soon as that tenon goes in there, which is the domino slip tenon, as soon as that goes in, if it's off to the side at all, your joint is going to be open. It's going to, it's going to hold the joint open and you're not going to pull it up straight. It's crucial that that machine enters at 90 degrees or perpendicular to whatever surface it's on. Even if it's a 45 degree, I need to set it so that it's going in perpendicular on that plane even though it's been a 45 on the end of a piece of straight piece of timber. Like if there was a 45 here and I was putting a domino in that 45, it's going straight into the surface. And that's how it can do a joint, you know, 45 to flat. 
or 45 to 45. It's relying on those two planes to come together and it's going to have that perpendicular dowel in there. Dowel, domino, non-rotating dowel, slip tenon. There are so many things you can call it. All right, next thing, next thing, next thing. I'll disconnect the power again. And the dust extraction, bring it back over here. I'm going to do something else with it. Now, even if you don't own a domino, the, a lot of these principles will also work with a biscuit jointer. Starting current is about three times the running current. Okay. And also remember that little dust extractor is on the same getup as well. So on a 10 amp circuit, which is what that machine was plugged into, that could, uh, that could be an issue. Yeah. Uh, if it's as, no, maybe not, maybe not. Yeah. And with that smaller lead, that's probably what the main problem was. It worked fine with the normal lead. Now, this thing here is a trim stop. It works by going onto the base of the domino and you can undo these two guys here and open them up or close them. Now, the advantage of that is that if I have a piece of skinny timber, let's say for instance this, and I want to put a domino in the end of that, and I don't want to use my, my line of sight to work out where it's got to go, I can put this on it and pull those two guys up against the edge. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. <coughs> Do it up here again. Can you see that? So tip it over sideways. I can set this up as a guide and I'll show you how to do it. This isn't a, one of my standard videos. This is live. It's just I'm mucking around with things. I'm not setting things up how they should be. All right. Let's slide that on. I'll stand her upright so you can see it going on. That way around. Oh, which way are we going, David? Yep, that way. I'll turn it around this way so you can drop, see it dropping on. Done. And on either side, you've got these little clips that push in and they go over. I'll undo them a little bit. That one's on. tightened up and this one and also it's one of those things when you're doing things upside down when you're doing it upside down it's, you know, it's, you're asking for trouble aren't you there we go so that is now on the underside of the machine and I can adjust these to wherever I want to act as a, a, um, a support now I'm going there are there's measurements across the plate at the back here in, that are etched in or, you know, cut in, however they, they make the stuff. And you can set it so that it's dead centre. But I will need to put my glasses on for this and measure that again. Pick the tape ruler up off the floor. You notice I took the power and the hose off because it's a whole lot easier to set this up when it's free of all of the other stuff. Okay, we've got 40 close enough to set that to 20. And this one out to 20. Tighten those green. Anything green on a Festool machine is normally an operational part of the machine. So that is centered. And I did that via just here. Uh, 20 amp circuit. No, this is a 10 amp circuit. 240 volts. All, everything in Australia is 240 volts. We don't have 110. Uh, it's all 240. So using that little theory again, and this thing is great. I just keep this in the shed. So it says, um, how many amps is watts divided by volts? So in Australia, most of our circuits are 2,400 um, watts, 2,400 watts in a 10 amp circuit. 
So 24 divided by 200, sorry, 2,400 divided by 240 is 10 amps. That's how we do it. Uh, you guys, if you had um, a 2,400 watt circuit on 110 volts, that would be 20 amps. See, that's how it works. I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me. <laughs> anyway, next thing. So I'm going to run the domino into the end of this. So again, I'll lock it down. And let's use a different flavor of hold down. Let's use the big clamp in the good old Stanton bench. This, this is so much fun. I love this bench. Works great. Alrighty. There. Will you be able to see that from there? A little bit of slop in that end. That's slightly narrower down there. Take it in a little bit. And that one in a little. I put this over the jointer earlier today. I'm going to run it over the jointer again a little bit later on for you guys. Okay. That's got him. See that? That's nice and tight. That's not going anywhere. It ain't going anywhere. I'm going to move it all along so you can see what's happening. There. So I can slide it in this way and hold it to there. And away we're going to go. I'm going to plug everything back in again, making sure I pick up the right cable. Uh, that one. It's not hard to guess which one it is. It's got the other hose hanging off it. And why haven't I got the 36 millimeter hose plugged into it? Because the other, I don't have the adapter for that. This is what I was talking about earlier. This is the larger hose. It will not go on. To the domino there. So if you get a, T, a 17 mil, oh, sorry, a 17 liter dust extractor from Festool, you'll need to get that adapter to go onto this machine if you do want to use this machine with it. All right, and the uh, dust extraction is here. Earmuffs and eyes, and I'll only go in 35 millimeters on this one again. Pull that back. Uh, 240 to grounded conductors, 50 hertz like UK. This one, I'll tell you how many hertz it is. Uh, so 50 slash 60. So it's 220 slash 240. All right. Here we go. Pop him on there. How easy was that? That, without having to worry about anything, it was done. Now the other thing I can do with the domino, I'm not going to do it right at the moment. When I built a handrail here, I had balusters that I had to put dominoes in the end of the balusters. So what you can do, and people have been asking me what to do with some of these little guys that John's made, I could... Get that, that. I could possibly do it with any of these down here. That and let me, that'll do us. I could put one of these guys anywhere in the bench. Let's say there. And another one there. And another one there. All right. And I could... Actually, that's probably... A bad move. This one would be best. The flat one down at the end, down there, that one there, and that one there. And then you can get your piece of timber and put it in, wobble it around to wherever it's got to go. If I go down there, maybe that might work better. There and down the end there. That'll work. Okay, I've set those up as a pattern. You may. Can you see the other one? There's one down the end there as well. Pull it back a little bit. Ah, see it? 
back out, pushing it back up because the domino wants to fall off the, the bench here. So I can push those in. And then I can, if this was a short piece like a baluster, I could then just go straight into it with this, if it was cut off there. If it was longer on this bench, there's all sorts of ways of doing it. That one there, uh, that one there, move this off. Put that there, that one there, those two there, and then another one. There, and that'll stop it going off that side. There are so many things that you can do with these small dogs. So you can line it up and then just do your plunge in the end. I know that might not sound like it's exciting, but I'll tell you what, if you're doing a hundred of the things, you don't want to be clamping, you want to just pop it into a jig and that, that's going to hold it. It's not going to go anywhere. It's all sitting down on here. Forget about all this part hanging out the back there if it's only a short one. And again, for demonstration purposes, I've got this thing set up in the corner. I'd run it long, right the length and away we go. Anyway, that is that as far as the domino is concerned. There are other things that I can tell you about. One of the things is the thing called the Seneca adapter, which allows me to use all of the small domino cutters on the big fellow. And you might say, well, what's a Seneca adapter? Let me see if I've got one here. There we do. This little guy here. See that? It's a piece of steel that's got the right length, the right thread, and the right thread to go as an adapter between the drive from the Domino XL to any of the 500s cutters. So I can, with this machine, using this, I can go 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, 40, 14 millimeters. And that's one of the reasons I opted for this. Now, in hindsight, would I have done that again? Probably not, because it's very rare that I use the, 14, the, the 12s and the 14s. The, um, I would probably have bought the 500. That's just me because I've scaled down from doing what I used to do. So if you're just doing small joinery, if you're making cabinets and some small stools and things like that, or chairs, chairs will be fine with the Domino 500. But when you get into big heavier stuff, if I'm going to make big heavy tables and, and entry doors that are a meter wide, yeah, you need this guy here. So <clears throat> that's basically that as far as the Domino is concerned. And it was great that it, uh, it did that little bit of a... Party trick is one that everyone's going to remember, isn't it? <laughs> Let me get back over to this other side here. And we'll have a look. Can the 700 perform plunges to a specific step similar to a stop turret on a router? Uh, yes, to a certain degree. It, um, it has sets uh, every 5 millimeter increment. Now, I haven't really looked at wanting to do anything different to that. I think five millimeters should be fine, shouldn't it? If you wanted to go to depths of, say, a millimeter or two millimeters, you could use a, a secondary plate on the face. You could anchor something like that to it. You could make it, say, two millimeters thick, the plate, and just set it to those particular stops. Um, there's no other way, really, that I know of on that machine to do that. Now, we need to get into the show because there's more that I want to tell you about. So let's get into the uh, ragtie. Ragtie, if you are there, synchron synchronous motor speed is a function of frequency design, will only affect universal motors. Tool motors are probably synchronized, synchronous in most cases. Okay, Matt. 10 uh, and breaker is at the main board. You might see an earth leaker breaker for wet areas. Okay, this is an interesting subject straight off the side, isn't it, that uh, I didn't realize was going to happen. I'll pull that camera up just a touch. There we go. The standard outlet is 240 volts, 10 amps. Then we go to 240, 15, single phase, three phases, 415. Correct. Depth stops are relative to the domino length. You can cut your own dominoes. I have domino rod that's around about 700 millimeters long, 750, and I can cut those off to whatever length I needed to. All right, you guys keep on having that conversation there, and we'll get into ragtie. Glasses on, glasses off, glasses on, glasses off. Ragtie is here. So I've got a picture of a, a bedhead that Ragtie built. Now, how nice is that? 
Where are we? I've listened to your show and heard you asked us to send pictures of projects we've made. I hope I'm not being too bold but sending these modest shots of a headboard I made in my tiny 9.5 by 11.5 foot shed or shop. It stands 6 feet tall and is approximately 4 inches wider than a king size bed. Uh, it is what we call a clip-on as it is affixed to the wall with clips that fully secure it while only taking less than one half of an inch. This allows you to roll or slide the bed away from the headboard to easily change the bedding, put it back, uh, it is finished in, and, and put it back. It's finished in cottage white waterborne lacquer. I hope this is okay to paste, to, oh, sorry, to post here for your consideration. And I thank you. Well, that's terrific. Here's another picture from the side. How nice is that? What a talent. Um, it's, uh, these things are lovely. I love it when people send photos of what they're doing. And look, it can be something grand or it can be a breadboard. I don't care. It's one of your things that you've spent time and effort in making. And that's, that's it. You know, this is not uh, a, uh, a judgment panel by any stretch of the imagination. This is where people can come and share information and ideas. You guys are chatting away there as far as the, um, the electrics are concerned and the different uh, supplies in the States versus uh, Europe and also Australia. You know, I couldn't be happier for you guys to be doing that. It's great. It's a, it's a forum that I've created and a little bit of interest and a giggle around the edge. So what's the next thing we've got? Um, ben Malipa. Now, Ben, this might be a bit sad for, for Ben. He sent me in a picture of his dog and we were talking about eye muffs and he said, all pets have got to be safe in the shop. Um, it's good to have an animal around the workshop, but safety first and his little buddy needed to be safe. Uh, I know what you mean. This is Bo, my staffy cross and rest in peace now. This photo was taken about a year ago and I know how hard it is to lose a pet. They, they just become part of the family. I, you know, people that don't get concerned about it, I, um, I, I wonder. I really do. All right. Now, the other thing I've got here is from previous week. Here we go. This is the uh, Derek, the winner. From, and there's his new black eye muffs that arrived. And here he is sporting them. I said, Derek, I need a photo of you wearing them. And this is his, uh, in his workshop. Remember a few months back, I put a picture up of his tool tower. On top of that is a dust extractor, but all his go-to tools are hanging on the side. And there's a blue tongue lizard. You guys in the rest of the world may not, may not know what they are, but they are an Australian reptile that is just harmless, harmless, harmless. And, you know, they eat flies, they eat mosquitoes and they can swim, they can climb walls. You'll be amazed at what those little guys can do. They're about a little bit shorter than my keyboard here to give you an idea as to the size of them. And I have seen people purposely try to run them over. They, the thing is, during summer, they get out on the street because it's nice and warm on the bitumen. They, they're reptile and they need to warm up. They're not too smart. And they go out there and you see a dead bluey on the road. That's what we call them, the bluey. And it's just, it's a tragedy. And I have actually seen people aim to run them over and squish them. And it's how un-Australian can that be? That's just terrible. So we have some dangerous animals, but we also have some animals that, you know, what the hell? We're, we're all here on the planet together. Try and get along. Try and survive with each other. Uh, well, that's my, my gripe about that. Um, Sue Hilton and Stanley. Okay, so as I say, Jeremy Carter from um, Stanley Black & Decker has offered to give us some prizes for the next three weeks. He also supplied the Irwin uh, tool bag, which I will announce in a second who the winner was. And uh, this is so generous of him. As I say, they're going to send out a four foot level and also a DeWalt shirt and a DeWalt cap. And as I say, also Carbotech have said they were going to Give us something, and it'll probably be in around about three weeks' time. And I've selected the prize already, so uh, keep your eyes peeled for that one. But that's great that uh, Stanley Black & Decker have uh, given us those things to, to share, to keep. I don't get one. This is my 
upset look. Ha! <laughs> um, Ian one of the few reptiles in Australia that is harmless. That's lovely. Just reading back through a quick bit there. I opened a can of worms. <laughs> Stand in the corner. No, well, no one's been in the corner for a while. You might need to dust it off. All right. Now, the competition this week. I have, you know, I ask you to put in why. Uh, so much stuff, so little storage. Uh, I've just started a carpentry apprenticeship and really enjoy woodworking. The videos are very inspiring. Thank you. Uh, make it easier to transport my tools. Now, this is all about the... Um, <clears throat> This is all about this, the Irwin bag. I need a coffee. <clears throat> and it's interesting what people are thinking, whether they want to, just for me to tell, or for them to tell me why they want them, or, or whether they feel that if mentioning the brand is going to help. It's, it's nothing to do with it. This is just interest. So in the, the level one, also, I tell, tell you, come on, guys, just... Uh, Tell me why you, you'd need one. Um, it would help me to organize my, my go-to tool bag if I'm doing work in the house. I can pack my tools and take them with me. That's a pretty good answer. I can go with the others and hold my... It can go with the others and hold my yellow box, shed, stand, and bench tocks. That's a bit of a suck-up. Uh, but I, look, I appreciate it. Not a problem. Uh, always losing my stuff. Need one to carry around the job site. Um... So I can take a selection of hand tools to the markets and hold demonstrations on woodwork. That's a good answer. Uh, they look good. I've recently retired and have refreshed my interest in woodworking. Uh, needs of some good tools. To bag or not to bag, I'd love a bag to carry my tools. My old ones are starting to fall apart. Uh, to keep my wife's hand tools separate from mine. I didn't see that one. Uh, I've been bitten by the wood bug, wood bug and just starting out. Uh, and super excited to be starting my creative journey, making things myself. Uh, diving into an area as a girl, I never thought I could. I think I've read enough of them. Uh, but the winner, and you'll know straight away if you've won, uh, was a woman. So I think that's great. Something to carry the cat in. <laughs> Can you believe it? All right. So the winner was Deb Scott. Deb, I'm going to get in touch with uh, with Jeremy, and I'll get in touch with you as well. I'll flick you an email, and uh, we can take it from there. And I need a picture of the cat in the bag. <laughs> okay, that's the challenge. When you get that tool bag, I want you to take a photo of the cat in the bag and looking happy, not not looking. Uh, as though it's, but you can't zip the top over and have the cat underneath. I've actually got to see the cat sitting there thinking, I I like Irwin. That's what it's, <laughs> that'd be great. All right, we're just about up to the end of the show, guys. I'm going to have a look down the side here, see if there's anything else there. Derek Hilton Stanley, and uh, look, I've got this picture here, another one for George. Thank you so much, George, for for what you've done. It's it's been very appreciated. And I'm sure that everyone who's watched the show or who uh, who's won some eye moths, they're going to be saying to other people, you got to get these things. And again, it's, there's no kickback to me. I pick, I scored a pair of these, and I, I think I put in more than my share of work to earn <laughs> that pair there. All right. I think that might be Zane, cat in the bag, easy, happy cat in the bag, doubtful. No, it's got to be happy cat. Happy cat, happy cat. All right. Guys, I think I'm going to wind it up a little early today. I've got another four minutes to go, but uh, it's it uh, I, it's a lovely day outside and I want to do things. So thanks again for watching. Look after yourselves. Be nice to people. I'm glad that the stream held itself together well this week. The domino decided it wanted to muck around a little bit, but look, we all drew something from that experience. <laughs> Me, a little bit of embarrassment. Then I got caught out for using the wrong cable, but there you go. It's a learning experience for everyone else. And uh, Hilton, the eye muffs are awesome. So again, thanks to everyone for watching, and I shall see you next week, hopefully. I should be on. I've got a big event happening here the Saturday before. So the day before, I may not be on top of it, but I will have the show as normal. All right. See you later. Bye.